And he says this, look at what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 7. This is Solomon, the wisest person in the Bible apart from Jesus. He says this, look at, a wise person thinks about death constantly, but a fool only worries about having a good time. That's great you have all that stuff, but what's gonna matter? This is what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 7. It's better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. This is what he says. After all, everyone dies, so the living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. And then he says this. Look at what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 7. This is Solomon, the wisest person in the Bible apart from Jesus. He says this. Look at A wise person thinks about death constantly, but a fool only worries about having a good time. A wise person thinks about death constantly, but a fool only worries about having a good time. Solomon says, we're all, it's better to go to a funeral than a party because there's a refining influence. Tonight, there's something sobering about death. There's something sobering about judgment day. So Solomon says it matters. A wise person thinks about the judgment. The wise person thinks about eternity. A wise person thinks about life after death, but a fool only worries about how could I have pleasure now? How could I be happy now? How could I be satisfied now? Now, let me give you, before I go into the rewards we're gonna get, five purposes of judgment day okay five purposes write these down of judgment day number one purpose of judgment day is accountability for your actions look at what second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ so each one of you will receive what you did in the body good or bad okay so judgment day reminds us that our actions in this life have eternal consequences so we will be held accountable for good or bad and this should make you motivated to live a righteous life. So number one is accountability for actions. Judgment day is a time where God holds us accountable for the way that we live our life. If we live our life bad, judgment day is the time where God brings that up. If we live our life good, judgment day. Now you might be standing saying, well, God hasn't affirmed me. God hasn't told me if I've been living bad or living good. And you think God's silence is God ignoring the fact you're living bad or ignoring the fact you're living good. Judgment day is God speaking out against your life and saying, I am not silent. Just because I haven't said something now in the 70 years doesn't mean what you do now won't echo for eternity. So number one is judgment day's purpose is accountability for actions. You will be judged based on what you did. For all of you Christians, and I hate to come at you strong, but I have to, that say, oh, it's not about works, brother. Works don't matter. I hate to tell you, works absolutely matter on judgment day. Now, works don't get you saved. Works prove you've been saved. That's why James says, if you have faith without works, your faith can't save you. You need to have action. You're not saved if you just believe, but have zero action in your life because the action proves, the action proves you've actually believed. So judgment day's purpose, accountability for your actions. Number two, justice and reward. That's what judgment day is for, justice and reward. Romans chapter two, verse six, he will render each one according to his works. So judgment day, God will ensure justice is served. Those that faithfully followed him will get a reward and those that disobeyed him, rejected him, denied him, cursed him out will face consequences i know what you know i i agree with what you would say is i watch the grammys i watch the all these shows i, I don't even name some of them because they're so dark and demonic and you see certain people from certain communities mocking god you know they're twerking on the cross they're literally just making uh i i don't i can't even say it because i don't even want to blaspheme god by saying the shameful things they do i feel gross saying the shameful things these people do. And we watch them on the Grammys on television mocking our Jesus, marking our, mocking our Savior. And you, you think like, God, why wouldn't you just strike him dead right now? But trust me, every single person that has mocked him, shake their fist at him, rejected him, denied him, they will see justice. Justice will be served. God will render each one according to his works. So just because God isn't judging them now doesn't mean he won't judge them. So you will be judged, that gives us hope, and they will be judged. So don't worry, you don't need to try to judge them and yell at them. Paul says we judge those in the church, not outside the church. They will receive judgment from God, okay? So number two is justice and reward. Number three is resurrection and eternal life. 
okay? The Bible says in John 5, 28 through 29, do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear this voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. So there will be resurrection and eternal life. Judgment day is that resurrection. You'll be resurrected on judgment day into new life. You'll be raised to eternal life with Christ with no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more, te no, no more tears. And then those that didn't put their faith in Christ will receive punishment and will be condemned. They will also rise. The ungodly will also rise, but they will rise to re receive condemnation and punishment. So number three is resurrection and, e and eternal life. Number four, purpose of judgment day is accountability for our words. Oh, this is very, very scary right here. What I'm about to show you, okay? Very scary. Matthew 12, verse 36. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on judgment day for every empty word they have spoken. Let me quote this again. This is red letters, the words of Jesus. Everyone will give an account on judgment day for the empty words they have spoken. No one's getting away from this. No one's getting out of this. We will all be accountable for the empty words we spoke. How many empty words did I speak today? How many vulgar things? How many vain things? How many shameful things? How many negative things that tore down? Things that weren't godly? Things that didn't honor him? Words that were tearing others down and mocking others and curse words. And we have pastors right now. I won't mention names because I'm not, I don't, I don't have the time to start a, a war with anybody, okay? I don't have time for drama and war. So I, I'll just refrain, even though I think they should be called out for this. I'm going to refrain from calling them out by name. I've already made a video on it and I did my best to just give you the Bible teaching. We have pastors now saying it's okay to cuss. We have pastors saying God told them to cuss. Literally one of the most famous pastors of our generation just got done saying, God told me to cuss in my podcast. That's absolute. And I, I use this word sparingly. That is cap. You're lying on God. God did not tell you to cuss. Yeah, I woke up and God told me, I heard him say, I want you to do this to reach people. No, 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 no. The devil told you to. Just be honest. It was a, it was a demonic spirit that told you to cuss. God is not out here telling people to cuss. And the weird part about some of you is you're like, oh, it's fine. I'll still listen to them. What? How are we going to listen to people? And then I read the letter, the words of Jesus and Jesus goes, Matthew 12, every empty word will be, you'll be accountable on judgment day. Yet pastors are saying it's okay to cuss. It's okay to curse. No, it's not. And if you're cursing and cussing, repent now. Cause God's going to be like, you said this, you said that. Well, brother, I'm under the blood. Yeah. But you, if you keep on sinning, the blood's no longer there to forgive your sin. The Bible says. You will be accountable for your words. That's number four. Number five, the purpose of judgment day is separation. Some of you are typing his name in the chat. Okay, I'm not going to ban you. I'm not going to delete you mod. Let him type the name if they need to. It is what it is. Okay, I believe you should be getting called out for this trash. Number five is separation of the righteous and the wicked. Look at what Matthew 25, 32 says. He will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Okay, so a shepherd might have a herd of sheep but there's also goats mixed in and the shepherd's going to separate them in the same way on judgment day, God is going to separate the righteous from the wicked. He will gather his followers, grant them eternal life in his presence. And those that rejected, rejected him will get separated. He'll put them to the left and they will receive the full brunt of God's wrath. Absolutely. It is a time of separation, the sheep from the goats.